Alrighty guys, so today we are going to be breaking down the lighting setup for my last video, which is called The Last Scoop. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out here. It's about the conflict between two mates who are fighting over The Last Scoop of pre-workout. So yeah, let's get into it. How's it going guys? My name is Andrew Murphy from Down Under in Gold Coast, Australia. All right, so this was a super duper fun shoot to be a part of. Basically how it all started is uh, my mate Jacob came to me and he was like, hey dude, I've got this stunt scene that I want to basically put together. Uh, he put together with Josh, who I met uh, at the the first time I actually met him was at this uh, the shoot that we did. And basically he was like, let's put something together. Let's film something cool. Can you light it? Can you shoot it? And I really wanted to test out a whole bunch of different like lighting and stuff. So kind of worked out good. And the end result turned out so good. So thankfully as well, we actually shot this after I shot my short film, um, What Happened in Mexico, where I used some really like neon sort of lights. I had a pink and a teal, kind of like from that like Blade Runner vibe, I guess. And from shooting that short film, I learned a lot about working with colors and kind of like how to make them look as good as possible. One of the main things I learned from that shoot is to not use your RGB lights at 100% saturation. So I found that even though we're shooting in raw, sometimes some of, it, some of the different colors Color channels would be very close to clipping and you get a really weird like color situation going on even though we were shooting in raw and 10 or 12 bit uh, we're still getting very close to clipping on some of the color channels so basically by bringing it down the saturation isn't as much and you don't you just have a bit more like latitude between where you're going to clip with each color the second thing i took away is to have some sort of like neutral color to make skin tones look somewhat natural so again, in what happened in Mexico, if you haven't seen it as well, I'll put it up here so you can go check it out. But basically we just used a pink and a blue and there was no neutral kind of like 5600 Kelvin white balance or daylight balance light in there. And there's this weird kind of like hard edge between the two colors. And that's what I was saying before, this kind of like this weird clipping and it didn't really like merge and work together, together too well. So going into this, uh, this little commercial that we did the last scoop, essentially what we did is I made sure there was always a 5600 Kelvin daylight balance source near our talon. So at least the skin tones and the general area of stuff still look normal. And then the background, everything could be as colorful as possible. All right, so basically the concept of this was is that two mates walk in and everything is just normal, everything is natural. And then as soon as uh, Josh goes to grab the pre-workout, everything changes, it goes to this full like, anime mode, everything gets super colorful, and that is where the color change comes in. So essentially we shot this, uh, this daytime stuff first. This was a pretty easy setup. I just had a 720B uh, basically bounced against the wall, uh, and then a kind of couple of little tubes here and there just to add some little kicks. And then basically for the entire shoot, I had Jason, my mate, who was an absolute trooper, an absolute champ. He had the Forza 60B with a softbox on it, and he held it above our talent for the whole thing, all the fighting, all the intro stuff, like basically the whole thing. It was crazy, but he did an amazing job and couldn't end up with that. So basically in most of the scenes, I try to have Jason hold the light either directly above the middle of the talent or slightly back from the camera. So essentially, if this is the line, so there's a person here, person here, and I'm shooting this person, try to have it back a little bit so they're kind of like somewhat backlit by it. And once Josh actually goes in for the grab, we can see just like kind of how much this 5600 Kelvin daylight balanced light is actually doing to the scene. So again, without this, the skin tones would just be colored. So there wouldn't be like any separation. You wouldn't be able to separate the person from the background as well. And that's why this worked so good. Now, because we were working on a really tight timeline and with a really small crew essentially like Jason was the only one that could operate lights so it's just me shooting Jason holding a light and that's why in this scene here basically there have, we have a spotlight above and then we didn't have another light to be able to put above uh, the talent to kind of like make it look somewhat natural and somewhat consistent but the idea of this whole thing is that it's supposed to just be like kind of like anime inspired and not be super realistic so it kind of worked anyway so basically once all the color comes into the scene we've got a few different lights going on so the main light we have to the right of frame if we're going off this frame uh, is basically a mix panel 150 and that is on just like i think it was like a 360 degree red just like a really vibrant red and then we also had a 15x on that same right side just basically lent up against some gym equipment 
moment. And they were also on a red hue. And then on the left side of frame, we had all the blue ones. So I think we had a 15X and a 30X on a blue. And that was basically uh, just leaning up against the wall. And in this shot specifically, you can see a red cast coming out of the, uh, the stairwell. And that was because we had a 15X tube in there as well. Now, how we actually managed to achieve this shot, because I had a ton of people ask me how long it took to roll it and uh, basically get it to land in the exact position. What we actually did was actually reversed it. So we had uh, the uh, bit of pre-workout in the middle of the spotlight set up, ready to go. And then we had a fan, which I was gonna use for haze. And essentially we had the fan on and Jason would just like basically bring it in and start rolling away the, uh, the pre-workout. And then we basically had to time it. So before we did that, we had uh, the boys look, up, look at each other and look back the pre-workout so we had to kind of time what it was going to look like once we reversed it so then it would actually work which is a little bit confusing but it worked out really good now thankfully before we actually started shooting any of this uh jacob and josh actually put together the stunt scene and they filmed it just like on an iphone and they sent me over the previous so here's a bit of an example of the previous that they sent me just to kind of give me an idea of like what the stunt scene was going to be what the moves are going to be and some rough angles sort of thing uh, and then basically going into it i had an idea of what was actually going to happen and where i kind of needed to be and it took a little bit of time to kind of like work out where we needed to be and kind of like what the camera angles were. But then once we got into it, it was basically just like a, uh, I guess like two 45 degree angles and shooting each person. And we just basically ran through the whole thing in little chunks. So the boys didn't have to kind of like do the whole thing in one take. Now, ideally, if we had enough time, I would have loved to have shot a wide, just like side view of the boys fighting to be able to cut to that as just like kind of like another angle rather than just having the two angles. But it already took us about five hours to shoot this. I think we finished at like midnight or one o'clock in the morning. So we kind of were on a time frame for what we actually, the time that we put into it and the time that we had to shoot this, it turned out so, so good. Everyone's absolutely stoked by how it actually turned out. And finally for the scene where Josh's eyes start glowing after he takes the last scoop of pre-workout, uh, this was, wasn't was actually a practical thing. This is just all done in uh, DaVinci Resolve. So essentially I just went through and I just painted every single frame in just like, cause I want it to kind of look like a bit more of a cartoony anime style effect. And then the final thing I did was add the kind of like the light beams and stuff and a bit of a uh, glow on Jacob's face and also the uh, the reflections in his eyes as well. Which is, so it kind of like sells the effect a little bit more. Again, if we thought about this a little bit more and we had the time, it would have been good to basically have even just like a little 6C tube held up against like Jacob and Josh's face to have some sort of, I guess, like color cast on them to have stop me from having to do this in post. But considering like it actually worked out really good and thankfully DaVinci has really good tools for like tracking faces and tracking stuff to make it super duper easy to make this effect possible. But overall, it wasn't a super duper complicated shoot to I guess like shoot uh, the main thing that I just learned from the short film that I shot uh, what happened in Mexico was to basically have your colors not have my 100% saturation and also have some sort of daylight or some sort of neutral color to then pop your talent out from the background and the boys are absolutely stoked with how this turned out I'm absolutely stoked with how this turned out and uh, yeah, can't wait to shoot another one just like this. But anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this one, then consider liking and subscribing to the channel. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave it linked down below so you can go check it out. Otherwise, stay creative and just be you. Have fun.